Okay, so on March 15th, 2014, at the Complete Strategist, we had a Netrunner tournament. It was the first ever drafting Netrunner tournament that we've had. I had never drafted before, at least for a collectible or customizable card game, but I played a lot of Seven Wonders, so I was counting and really good at it, not going to lie. So I was counting on those skills to help me. Here's a video of me drafting both decks. I really... You can see, clearly, I'm going to make a lot of mistakes, but now, after having played the draft, I know a lot of the mistakes I made, um, so I'll point those out to you. So, here's the first, quote, booster. The Caduceus is really good, but there's a better card in there, and at least I don't make a mistake right away. Oh yeah, there it is. Yeah, I was able to, uh, I won half the games. We played four rounds. I won four games total. Hostile Takeover, that is the card. That is the card to take right there. All right. There we go. Now only nine cards to choose from. Okay, here I make a mistake. So one good move, one bad move. So... Here, I would, knowing what I know now, I would take the Archive Memories or the Adonis Campaign. Or maybe, if I'm going to go for it, the Fetal AI, right? Um, taking that Draco. See, I, at the time, I was thinking, you know, I didn't know what to expect. So I was thinking, man, I'm going to need cheap ice to res. Draco's really good ice. Uh, and it is. Uh, you set the strength really high late in the game, and you set the strength low early in the game. You know, if everyone's using Crypsis, you can make the Draco really big, and then they have to trace, and you can drain them every time, and Draco's a good ice. But you know what? There's a lot of Dracos out there. I should have taken that Adonis campaign. Oh well. Lesson learned. Okay, now what? What am I going to take now? I should take the Accelerated Beta Test. The three for two agendas are huge. Right? To running all the priority wrecks in your deck is a pain in the ass. I ended up running... Three three-pointers in my deck. If I, w I could have drafted three more two-pointers, taken out one ice, which I didn't need, um, and then replaced two three-pointers with three two-pointers. And they're three for twos, right? Accelerate Beta says it's three for twos. So you can install it unadvanced, and then advanced, advanced, advanced score. And that is huge. Um, so Accelerated Beta Test is the card to take here, uh, I think, knowing what I know now. And I do take it. All right, so so far we got... Good move, bad move, good move. Right, so I'm passing the two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here's seven cards. So I'm, I'm receiving six cards. Yeah, that should be. Yeah, right? There you go. Okay. I think Neural Katana is the card to take here. Definitely take that one. Um, it's got to be Neural Katana or Private Contracts. Yep. You got to take some ice. <laughs> I was worried, you know, I think I was worried too much about not having enough ice and ended up taking up too much ice. I think my half my deck was ice even after I built it, and that's not necessary. Here, see, I think Bernice might be the card to take. Um, or closed accounts or anonymous tip. It's like, you know, I need something to go with. You know, I took a Draco already, so I'm going to have some tagging ice, but a tag punishment is needed, right, to go with that. Yeah, Chum is bad, and, I mean, Chum isn't completely bad, but it's bad, it's worse in draft than it is in real Netrunner, because basically everyone has Crypsis. And basically Chum just ignores Crypsis and lets the Chum apply to the next wow, dice. Like so, I mean, Crypsis ignores Chum, right? Uh, and there aren't Swordsmen or Wraparounds or anything. Okay, so here, I mean, Neural EMP's not bad. I mean, I could have gone down that road if I would have taken the Fetal before. Okay, taking another Draco, bad move. <laughs> Bad move. Uh, probably should have taken something else. At least I could have taken that pad campaign. That would have been okay. What am I taking here? Um, I guess the right move might be Simone. And I take the Data Hound. I was thinking Data Hound would be... I, I thought in advance Data Hound would be strong in draft. Because you go in and you pick out their valuable card from R&D. Uh, well, from their stack, right? It's like they drafted that card. You find a good one. You get rid of it. Really screw them up. Uh, archive memories, good choice. A plus. Okay. Um, but data hounds really easy to deal with. It's just a little tiny trace. And take closed accounts. Not a useless tyrant. Good move. 
Yeah, don't even consider that tyrant. That's right. Closed accounts. Good choice. And the card I don't have any choice in is. So I have to take this card. I have to take this card. Freelancer. That's a freelancer. <laughs> so here's the cards I got. Could have done a little better. Replace those Dracos, Zeta Hounds. Maybe the, you know, could have had a, an Adonis, a pad, another, right? Some more economies. Um, but I did good moves on the Hostile Takeover, the Vitruvius, the Neural Katana. All right, so we, we, got, we got a few good cards in there. All right, next pack. We're passing to the right now. Okay, which card is the right card to take here? Probably another accelerated beta test is probably the right move, right? Uh, like I said, I had three three-pointers. If I would have drafted three two-pointers, like that accelerated beta test, I could have gotten rid of those and I only, you know, had one more agenda card, you know, um, and wouldn't have had to push through three-pointers. Um, but instead, I'm still worried about, you know, good ice, right? I mean, Ichi's really good, too. Uh, is it possible? I mean, I have. This, but I think I, I, I take the Enigma because I'm all worried about ice. That happens. Okay. It's not an error. And it's like I did the math on 14 agenda points, and I was like three three pointers. And it was nine. So passing to the right. Two, you know, the one I already have the hostile takeover is 10, and then two twos is 14. I could have had five twos, one three, and one one. That would have been right. All right, enough discussing about that. And so did I take the stupid enigma there? I probably did. Okay, then, now look, there's a Vitruvius. That's probably the right move again. Oh my god. Um, and I think I do take this Vitruvius. Well, really? This mm, guy? Wall of Thorns. That's pretty nasty. You don't want to run into that. I want a Brain Trust, right? So Brain Trust or Vitruvius. What's better? I think Vitruvius is better. It's really hard to over advance a Brain Trust. Someone it's not going to save you that much. A Vitruvius <laughs> counter is way better than a Brain Trust <laughs> counter. For sure, and easier to get. I mean, either one of those agendas here. You know, I had, look, I had the opportunity to get, you know, what I needed to make a better deck. Um, I just didn't. Right? I think I end up making the right move here. Yep, yep, Vitruvius. Take it, take it. Come on, you can do it. <sighs> yep, Vitruvius. Good, good choice. Okay, next. Ooh, false lead. That's not too bad. Okay, so here I think Eli's probably the best card here, right? Um, really strong central protection. And, yep, good. I took the Eli. All right, we're making some good moves. Nice. A plus. A plus. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, that Oversate AI is going to be really strong. You put that on a big ice, and people are going to have a really hard time breaking it with their All crappy the draft exactly decks. Um, you know, think of it as like a huge economy card, right? You use that on... I was hoping they might have made some shitty cards. Right, like a, a big ol' ice. Like, uh, I don't know. You don't want to use it on a Bioroid, because they'll just break it with clicks, but... You know, just just get draft a bigger... You know, a couple big ice. There's a bunch of Yanises all around. Yeah, take that Oversight AI. That card was an MVP for me. Uh, okay, commercialization, no. Marked accounts, pretty good. I'd take that marked accounts. That's probably the card to go for. All right. Uh, the Victor 1.0 isn't bad either. Uh, good central uh, protector. Mm, taking the Victor, okay. Not not too shabby, but maybe the marked accounts might have been better. No, I'm receiving five. Okay. You know, cons I mean, well, it depends, right? At this point, if I had earlier, if I had taken the Adonis and another pad, then I wouldn't have needed to take the marked accounts now. Right. Okay, so. Private contracts is probably the right one here. If I had taken a false lead earlier, then maybe I could have taken a posted bounty here. Um, 
Yeah, private contracts. That's a good choice. Okay. Another posted bounty. Sherlock is actually surprisingly strong in draft, um, but I never got to use it, so there you have it. But I think I am going to take it, and I think it is the right card to take from this set. Tell me about it. Because the TMI is just too expensive to res, right? As a uh, as drafting goes. All right, now we're getting to the dregs here. I should just take that C source, even if I'm not going to use it, just to deny it to someone else, right? Because it's like, oh, I'll let someone else have a woodcutter or a chilo, but instead I take a woodcutter because <laughs> I'm still ice paranoid. Here I take another woodcutter. There's been a lot of dedicated response teams going around, and I could have taken the strategy of just taking all of them uh, and then drafting data ravens and whatnot, and it probably would have screwed a lot of people up, uh, but I didn't. And the final card is Midori. How useless is that? <laughs> okay, so here's the, here's the 20 cards I got so far. Yeah, I was, you know, you can see throughout this whole corp draft, I was just paranoid about not having sufficient ice. I put too many ice, and uh, not enough other non-ice cards. That's a mistake I would not make again if I drafted again. Um, but the real, you know, it, it didn't hurt me to have a bunch of ice too much in game. It actually just hurt me because I could have had... You know, I, I drafted ice at, that I wasn't even using or was worthless at an opportunity cost of, uh, you know, better cards. Okay, so here, what do we have? Not really good. Don't really need that. A Nisei is four for two. That's a pain in the ass. Corporal Troubleshooter is really strong, but when are you going to have enough money to use that? All right? I didn't, I didn't think I'd ever have enough money to be able to use that for anything. Um... Wall of Static, Enigma, really good ice. Yeah, take the Wall of Static, that's good, because people are going to have a hard time breaking barriers, um, right, in general. Okay, putting the last pack out of the way so it doesn't get confused. Hedge Fund, yoink, snare, whoa, this hand, Neural Katana, oh my god, this is the great, I was freaking out, because this hand is so good, it's like what was already taken from this hand, right? Okay, mandatory upgrade, screw that shit, um, but... Yeah, it's like hedge fund, snare, even security subcontract, pop-up window, neural katana, wall of static. All these cards are really good. I take the hedge fund because economy. Um, if I had taken some asset-based economy earlier, like I should have, I might have not taken the hedge fund and taken the snare or something. Okay, here we go. Chimera. I thought about that chimera thinking, ooh, that's going to be real good. You can score a three-pointer behind that. But the problem is everyone's got Crypsis. So, oh, Chimera is not as good as you think it is, right? Scorched Earth, obviously it's it's Scorched Earth. See, there's another Enigma. I, I drafted an Enigma early, thinking I wouldn't, you know, but it's like, well, Enigmas aren't that rare. You could, you could get one later, right? And I could have had a better card. Could have taken an Enigma now or, you know. But take that Scorch. You know, at least if someone gets tagged. i already taken Dracos, right? So... If someone uh, gets tagged, I need a way to punish them, right? Besides just trashing, you know, besides the freelancer <laughs> that I don't think I'm even going to use in my deck. Um, you know, and even just trashing four cards with Scorch is good in a draft, and you never know when you'll just kill someone. So, yeah, Scorch it up. Okay. Oh, see, look at this. Okay, so Sea Source. What else? Ouroboros. Is that another? More woodcutters, huh? More Midoris. That encryption protocol is really good uh, in a draft, right? If I had, especially with pad campaigns and these asset-based economies, you know, make it even more expensive for the runner to trash stuff at basically no cost to you, uh, other than a card slot. I think that's really strong. Um... I could also take the government contracts to at least upgrade one of my... Yeah, take that encryption protocol. Even though I only have one, it, it kind of helped. Um, there's an archer. Oh my god, I'm actually seeing an archer. 
and I have an oversight AI already, I think, right? And I already have a hostile takeover. So I'm all about the archer. I can't believe I saw one. How could I not take it? There we go. Good choice. Good choice. Archer. So nice. Okay. Good move. What now here? Starting to see some dregs. Starting to see some dregs. Uh, I guess Data Raven would be a good choice here, right? Because, you know, even if you're not bringing the tag punishment, everyone's got resources here pretty much, right? They're playing Armitage, you know, runners. So, um... Here, I think I take the Flare, which is a really good choice to go with my Oversight AI, um, you know, and such. Uh, I don't know how much hardware runners are going to have, but, you know. Flare, really good, really strong ice with Oversight. I could get that Yanis to Oversight. That would have been not bad. Fetal, not too bad either. You could put it behind an Oversighted Yanis. <laughs> but I take the Hunter... Because I love Surprise. cheap Therese ice because my economy's low, right? I'm like, where's the economy? Well, you already passed the economy, stupid. Oh, taking a data hound. Oh, and a commercialization is the card I'm stuck with at the end. Oh. Yeah. Um, if I had taken that economy earlier instead of ice when I had the chance, it's like my whole mentality here was get the cheap ice, right? They don't cost anything to res. You'll be all set. And that kind of worked. Um, but I would have been much better off just getting more money and some slightly stronger and fewer ice. Okay, final pack. <clears throat> Caduceus is strong. Vitruvius is strong. Roto turret. Two roto turrets. Those are really strong. I didn't realize how strong they were, which is why I didn't take them. I probably should take one now. Um, you know, if I had taken the agendas earlier, I should have taken a roto turret now. Because I didn't take the agendas earlier, I should take the Vitruvius now. I don't think I take any of those. I think I take the marked accounts, which yeah makes up for my earlier not taking economy. But uh, yeah, on a first pick. Okay, this is a San San and a right June bug. The June bug <clears throat> can be really strong because you're going for three pointers, right? So I've been looking for any kind of you know advanceable trap uh, besides Ghost Branch. <laughs> This whole time, right? I know there's a rule you can't look through the cards you've already drafted uh, until, except in between packs. We all agreed to ignore that rule, um, so don't don't complain about it. Um, that's why I keep looking in the cards I've already drafted. But yeah, I mean, Sand Sand's really good, but um, it's expensive. I don't have a lot of money. At least I'm basically assuming I don't have a lot of money. There's a Rotaturret again. So yeah, Junebug. Junebug, not a bad choice. Not a bad choice at all. Okay, what do we have here? Biotic Labor is really strong. Um, Enigma's not bad. Using government contracts, you know, to upgrade from a priority wreck. It's not bad. <clears throat> I don't need another Draco. Heimdall's not bad either. Um, this is a tough choice, right? It's like, the Biotic Labor is really good, but I don't have enough 3 for 2s. If I had drafted the 3 for 2s earlier, I could take the Biotic Labor now. I could have had a Biotic Labor and a Sand Sand. Um, right? I just didn't. So, like if I would have, you know, only had one 3-pointer in the deck, and all those 3 for 2 agendas, plus Biotic Labor and Sand, we could have had a, we had ourselves a fast advance. Oh, shit. But we didn't, because I didn't do that. Um, what to take here? Ronin is not too bad, right? Because even if you don't kill anyone with it, it's like just doing three net damage to to uh, a runner, right? When they've only got a few cards in their deck. That is, and each one is a precious drafted card. It's not shabby, right? Um... You know, I came into this draft with the thought that, hey, it's like, they've only got a few cards. Even if you usually a net runner, you only, you know, try to damage someone to kill them. And other damage is like whatevs. But in a draft, it's like, whoa, I could, I could damage and, like, get the only economy card they have. Or get, you know, their only breaker, the last Crypsis, or who knows what. And then they're in deep shit. Okay, so I take the government contracts. Probably not the best choice. But I guess I needed it at some point, right? You don't have three priority wrecks. Well, maybe. Okay, so private contracts could be good here as an upgrade. 
Yeah. That's okay. Now I got two private contracts. Economy's not too shabby. Okay, what else we got here? Pop up window is 100% obviously the best card there uh, in my situation with the bad economy and um, such. Because right, now it's ice and economy. Costs nothing to res. Uh, you know, I. Is, is that it? Uh, is, I think there's a few more corp cards coming. A few more. I'm just waiting. Yeah, at various times during the draft, um, you know, the uh, the people to the right or left of you would go too fast or too slow, right? And you would end up, uh, you know, getting ahead of them or, you know, waiting for them or, you know, they'd be waiting for you. Yep, there we go. Okay, what do we got here? Mm, you know, Edge of World is actually really, is way better uh, than I thought. Right, Simone is also really good because basically in a draft with all the three pointers around, you have to be able to have a secure remote to score the three pointers. Right? Okay, Simone, pretty good. She did some work for me today. Um, I think the Heimdall is the good choice there. So you, have, you basically because of the three pointers and because there's not a lot of fast advance, you pretty much need to secure a remote. Right? And that remote's got to be deep to keep someone out with Crypsis and money. You know, who ba basically the, the runners with Crypsis will take enough virus counters in the Crypsis, right? And then they will take money, and they'll be able to they'll just wait for you to put something in your remote. And what are you going to do? <laughs> right? You need to make them run there. So an Edge of World is like a huge card that can help do that. Yep, to Ronin, good choice. And the card I have no choice over, another Freelancer. <laughs> okay, so that's, that's my Corp deck. It could have been way better, but it actually turned out pretty decent. Um... Yeah. You know. So that's that. Time to draft running. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely made some mistakes there, but I've you know it, it you know after doing it once, I've learned I've learned my lesson. Um, so some comments on the draft overall uh, while we're waiting here for the runner situation. Uh, a lot of the other um, players here, uh, you know, to them the prizes are really important. I don't really care about the prizes at all. Um, I care about them a, a very. I mean, I guess I care about them a tiny bit, but hardly at all compared to the other players. So they're like, well, if you, you know, if we have one game night kit, you're not supposed to. But 16 people show up. We have two draft pools, and you only should play with people in your pool. So there should be two overall winners, but we only have one overall play mat for the winner. It's you know, so it's like, uh, yeah. And then they're like, there should be alt art cards in the thing, and do prizes this way, and it's like, uh, that's not an issue to me, right? The issue to me is, if I go to a tournament, I, you know, I care about winning, right? I want to be the winner, feel like a winner, or lose, and at least, you know, and have, have it feel like that was a fair, competitive, test of skill game. Okay, running time. Woo! Look at that hand. Oh, yes. So, uh, we'll talk more about the drafting at some other point. But here, I think I take the sure gamble. Not a bad move. I probably should have taken the magnum opus. Sustained economy is more... I mean, sure gamble is really good, but a sustained economy is way better than, you know, four credits once. Um, not that that's bad, right? But I didn't know better because uh, I'd never played the draft before. Okay. I think, ooh, there's some good cards here. So the good cards here are modded and forged activation orders. Um, and I end up taking modded, realizing I'm going to... I think I take modded, which is a good choice. Realizing I'm going to have to install, like, you know, a Crypsis uh, for five. If I would have taken the Magnum Opus already, well, I'd have a Magnum Opus and a modded, and that would be my deck so far. It's looking pretty good. <laughs> But I didn't take it foolishly. I took the sure gamble. Still okay. Okay. Here, I was under the impression, right, incorrectly, the infiltration would be super good. And it is kind of good. Because people are going to be going, it's all advance, advance, and it's big remote. And I can't be running the big remote with a Crypsis too often. Uh, i got to run it only when there's points in there. So I took infiltration, thinking I wouldn't see a lot of infiltration to draft, right, because I didn't know what to expect yet. And... Um, I mean, infiltration was sometimes valuable, but I probably could have taken something better there. All right, here. 
I think I take Easy Mark, which is probably the right choice out of these cards. Um, yeah, probably. Yeah, so about the cards, the cards are sort of weird, right? The printing on them is sort of low res, like the, the quality of the, the print job is not as good, but it's it's playable. And they feel sort of waxy, um, you know, the texture of them and the, the material is different um, than regular Netrunner cards. But the smell of them is really good. I just, something about the way they smell, the, the ink chemical, is I just love that kind of smell. Here, I should probably take modded again. Um, what do I take? See, because I, you know, I should realize by now, right? But I didn't realize by now that all these programs that I'm gonna be are gonna be expensive to install. Like we've seen creepers already, right? So modded is a really, really good economy card. Uh, I take Xanadu, which I don't even use. <laughs> uh, okay. So here, what to do? Quality time is really good. Some, you know, actual draw power. But I think I take Data Leak Reversal, which has, it has potential in draft, right? It's like if someone's gonna try to tag me, it's like I'll take all the tags and, you know, make mill cards, and that could be super strong in a draft, especially when there's three pointers. If I mill a three pointer, go to archives, get it, can be all good. All right, took the all nighter. I guess I. Could have taken Surge, might have been slightly better, but yeah, none of those are good. Nerve Agent is obviously the best of these cards. Yoink. And took Scrubber, because I'm like, hey, people are playing Pad Campaign, right? So Scrubber is going to really help trashing a lot of this stuff, right? A lot of more asset-based economy than event and operation-based economy out there. Right? So... Trashing assets and upgrades is going to be huge. There's a worm that I had no choice but to take because it was the 10th card. And pack, next pack. Diesel's good. Oh, look at this tough choice. This choice is tough. Okay, so the two strongest cards here are obviously the Gordian Blade and the Inside Job, right? Right now, I think the only breaker I've got so far is Crypsis. Gordian Blade would be good. I saw a lot of Enigmas going around. Um, you know, so... But Inside Job is just... How can you... I mean, Diesel's really strong, too. Yeah, gotta consider that Gordian Blade. Um, I'd say it's even whichever one of those two you take. Right? Inside Job or Gordian Blade. I end up taking Inside Job, I believe. Yes. But, yeah, I can't, you can't go wrong with either one of those. Okay, let's see here. Sneak door, obviously the best choice, and I take it. Yes. Now I made a mistake here, not in taking sneak door, but you'll notice I'm not really drafting any memory. But I took a sneak door. I'm think. I guess I was thinking during the draft. Oh, I'm just gonna be using Crypsis, so that only take up one memory, and sneak door will take up two. That's three. So. Who really cares? I don't need to draft any memory cards. Why should I waste my time on that? And uh, there were times during the tournament where I was I was starved for memory um, because I didn't draft any and I had no choice. See here, I'm gonna pass over that Dyson. Gonna pass over that Dinosaurus. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of Darwins going on, and you saw there was tons of cyber feeders. I could have taken like all surges, Darwins, and cyber feeders, um, and really started something, right? That would have been sort of an amazing deck if I would have just, you know, done all those. I took a Darwin, all right, at least one Darwin, but I could have taken I could have been taking Darwins all day. See, there's a Grimoire. That's really what I should have taken, right? Three to install. No two memory, right? Everything's taken care of. And I think I'm going to see a lot of grimoires actually go past, and I don't take any of them. I should have taken at least two to three grimoires. That would have solved all my memory problems. Right. You know, that net shield's not too bad either. I end up taking a crash space, because I only saw one Scorch. I threw, gave away sea sources. I saw a lot of tagging ice, and I'm thinking, well, there's no Plaskreets, 
So I'll take a crash space when I see one. If I get tagged, I can remove the tag. And I already took the Data Leak Reversal, so that goes well with the crash space. Right? Goes very well together. This is just fluff. Yeah, it's fluff. Okay, waiting for more cards. Based on the ice that I've seen, mm. Crypsis is really solid. Yeah. I think, you know, I wanted to practice drafting before we actually did it, but everyone else it seems to be really conscious about how much it costs, and it was very expensive. We had to pay $30, right? So I guess that's, you know, $5 for the, for the tournament entry fee, $5 for the starter, the draft starter, and then $10 for the corp and $10 for the runner draft packs. Uh, so that's, that's expensive, but it's like, well, now we already have the starters. What card is right here? Compromise employee is not bad. Um, Pheromones is interesting. New Angeles City Hall could be interesting. Because, you know, there's not going to be a lot of agendas being scored with all the three-pointers out there. I think Fem is actually the way to go, right? It's like, I haven't modded. I haven't drawn any breakers yet at all. I gave away the Gordian Blade. It's a sentry breaker. There's a lot of small sentries. I'm not going to have to boost the Fem a lot. All right. Um, so, yeah. Okay, what do we have here? Oof. You know, I'm looking at the Morning Star here, right? So, Morning Star is not a bad choice here. I didn't already, you know, if I wanted to go with the Underworld Contacts rabbit hole link situation, I would have had to do that already. It's already too late for me to go down that road. Oof, more fems. I could take the toolbox. See, knowing what I've... Considering what I've already drafted, I should take the toolbox there, but I don't. Take a Deus Ex, that's the right choice there. That'll stop a Ronin or a Junebug or whatever, or a run through a Neural. Cortez Chip is better than Joshua B. You know, now thinking about it, I probably could have taken Joshua B to get the... would have helped me with the, the Data League Reversal and another Cortez Chip. I don't use those Cortez chips, but you've seen through the draft card so far, you could definitely build a deck around Xanadu Cortez chip forged activation orders. What card did I just take there automatically? Oh, Data Sucker. Yeah, we're taking Data Sucker. That's. <laughs> I guess shutdown's not bad. Um, but yeah, Data Sucker, boom. Surprisingly, Data Sucker didn't help me that much this tournament. I was able to get it on the table, but it got killed by a Roto Turret, and in another game, it just didn't matter too much. See, there's another Grimoire. That is what I should take right now. That Grimoire. That is the card for me. Um, but am I going to take another Infiltration? Because I still have the same frame of mind as I had for the last Infiltration. Uh, I considered the Force of Nature for the Code Gates, but it's really expensive. I should take the Grimoire. I take the Infiltration. I could have had two Grimoires now. Things would have been really great. What do we got here? Hmm, Forged isn't a bad choice here. Crescentus isn't a bad choice either if they res a big ice. Crash Space is also kind of good because it goes with you know my other Crash Space. But how paranoid am I um, about tags and scorches? Like how many do I think are out there? Right, I saw one and took it. Um, but yeah, I take another crash space. I guess I, you know, whatever. Alright, what do we got here? Somehow there's a magnum opus this late in the game. Well, yeah, gotta take that magnum opus. Uh, but think about it, if I had been smart and taken that magnum opus earlier, I could have had like two magnum opuses two Grimoires and two Modids right now in this deck, and that would have been, you know, those few choices that I that I messed up, like two or three picks that I chose poorly, my deck would have gone from, oh, it kind of works, to, oh yeah, this is a really good draft deck. Two Magnum Opus, I'll take a Peacock, that's the right choice there. Finally, a Breaker of some kind is good. Uh, no good cards here. <laughs> I guess Public Sympathy is the, I don't know. I wasn't smart enough to think about using Joshua B with that data leak reversal. So I didn't, you know. 
people really didn't want to use Joshua B. Like, I think I draft the public sympathy and never use it. I think that's what I do. Not the worst choice in the universe, I guess. At least give the next person the crappiest possible hand. Yeah. Okay. All right, so now I have to take that mem chip because I've started to realize, oh, shit, I don't have enough memory <laughs> in this deck. Take another scrubber because, I remember, I'm thinking about trashing all these assets that cost a lot. Um, okay, all-nighter's better than replicator, I guess. And Joshua B, okay. I never put him in a deck, even though I probably should have. Okay. This runner deck is so bad. All right, ten cards left. Wow, time just flew, didn't it? We drafted 80 cards, 80 picks. Did that feel like 80 picks to you? Didn't feel like 80 to me. Easy Mark's a good choice. Liberated Accounts is the best choice here. That's really a bad booster. Wow, that's a really bad one. Like, there's really nothing good in this hand besides that Liberated Accounts. I mean, the Deus Ex and the Easy Mark are okay. Smart move, liberated counts. But see, if I would have had two magnum opuses, uh, I could have actually foregone that liberated accounts for the easy mark. Right? Um, but I guess I just didn't, because I messed up already. All right. I was actually lucky enough to get that magnum opus, the single magnum opus, out in two games, and it really helped. Uh, I think I only won one of those games, but yeah, it's... Magnum Opus Crypsis is a really good way to just play this with this uh, card pool. All right, so I'm still thinking about trashing stuff. All right, so grab that imp. Clearly the best card here. Yep. But now, well, those scrub. Now that I got an imp, those scrubber picks are kind of silly, right? As it's like, oh, I'll just, you know, an imp was really freaking strong. It was really strong. I did play it a few times and did manage to trash stuff. I think I missed some opportunities also to pick Deja Vu, which I should have realized, oh, that's the only way to get anything back, right? Because you're going to get damage and whatever. Maker's Eye is really strong. Aesop's is really strong. But there you go. Test Run. That is the card. I already have a fem. How can I not take that test run? I took the test run. Correct choice, I think. Even though this is that was a really good pack. Look, even after that many picks, there's still a maker's eye. There's still these other cards in there. Okay, I should take I should take the deja vu, or I should take another mem chip, right? Because I am low on memory, and I take a cyber feeder. I'm a dumbass. Not smart. Should have taken the deja vu or mem chip there in the current situation. Should have if you know if I had chose wisely the rest of the tournament I should have been able to just take that deja vu uh, here I, if I would have chosen grimoires earlier I wouldn't need to take the grimoire now I should take a grimoire now if I had chosen wisely earlier I could have taken the daily reversal uh, I think I do still take the daily reversal um, for some shenanigans All right here e3 or cyber feeder is probably the good move here okay cyber feeder Yep. We're nearing the end. Morning Star, see? It's like, yep. Morning Star, and I didn't I have one memory. So I have max memory of five, and it's one card that is a mem chip. Ooh, I'm so smart. Look at me, Mr. Smarty. Don't know how to draft for shit. Uh, I'm picking my fingers. Just don't know how to draft. Now I do. <laughs> I learned my lessons while playing. Like, oh, that's what I should have taken. Once I saw what other people's draft decks were like. Um, yeah. So learn from me, people. Learn from me. This is this is the kind of thing you're gonna expect to see if you do a netrunner draft. Um, I only have one peacock. 
right? That's my code gate breaker. Yeah, I'm checking Peacock to see is that right? Because I can't remember these criminal breakers. No one ever uses. You know, which one? What, what do they do? <laughs> Peacock is for code gates. So I skip over the force of nature. <laughs> I think I take the demo run that I'm never going to use, but I have a nerve agent, right? So I was thinking about using the, that, and I'll take a creeper, not a replicator, and a wild side, and that's it. <laughs> there you go. A, a mediocre draft, but I, I had opportunities to make two really good decks. Um, you know, instead I got two kind of average decks. Just, a, you know, a few picks makes all the difference. Uh, in the world some of the you know the answers that I know now you know are in hindsight right it's like did I really know there was going to be you know all these problems in advance right I'm, I'm I'm basically you know captain hindsight here now that I know what all the cards were it's like oh obviously I should have picked that knowing what the cards were in the future so it's it's not as easy uh, as it looks but I do think Having seen the, you know, knowing the cards that are available in the draft, right? Knowing what kind of cards you're going to see a lot of and which ones you're not going to see a lot of um, really makes decision making uh, a lot easier, right? Someone who is already drafted is going to have a huge advantage over someone who hasn't, uh, at least with the same cards, um, regardless of Netrunner skills. So. Hope this prepares you for your draft. Uh, soon I'm going to upload videos of me actually playing with these draft decks. So stay tuned for that excitement.